Hey, what's up, guys? In this video, we're going to be doing top five skill champions in the game. I did another one of these top five videos, but the last time I did one was months and months ago when I first started doing YouTube. So it was a long time ago. Let me see how long ago it was. It was... I had to scroll down on my computer. Okay, so I did a top five skill champions nine months ago. So this is nine months later. Um, so the list has definitely changed. I think, yeah, it's definitely changed. So uh, I do have an honorable mention that I never thought I'd be saying, but for the sixth place, the honorable mention, it is Blade. Um, this is the first time I've ever made a tier list where Blade did not make the top five. Um, he's been out of the meta for a long ass time. You don't see this guy anymore, pretty much anywhere. He's pretty good with his regen and against mystics and villains still. But other than that, I mean, he's kind of just out of the meta like crazy. And, yeah, there's not much to say. Now, the person taking his fifth place spot, which is kind of sad. I didn't really want to say this. But I've seen too many people using them, and it's kind of hard to sway away from at this point. Also, Bloodstone. She is number five. Um, might get a promotion one day um, from more gameplay I see. But from what I see, people rank three in her as a six star. Her damage output is just crazy with her Hellfire rounds and Behemoth Buster rounds. <laughs> um, her damage is actually insane. And I would like to rank her up because if I get her as a six star, I'm not going to rank up the five star because I'm not going to really bother with five stars anymore. But um, her damage, if I get her as a six star, I will rank her up because her damage is crazy and she goes well with suicides because of the fact that. When she has a bleed on her, she's just doing even more damage to them. Um, also, she can shrug off non-damaging debuffs, which is really good for, like, characters like Close Encounter Voids. Voids with the Close Encounter's nodes, which is really annoying. Um, shit like that. There's also, like, other scenarios it's good for. And um, also, it's good um, her piece of utility. I think if she ends with a medium, it puts an incinerate on them. But if they're an evade character and they evade, you'll put a... Um, Cold Snap or Frostbite, whatever, which one of those it is, to make them not be able to evade, which is very helpful. She also fully counters um, healing with all the debuffs she puts on, if you get the Despair Mastery, because she puts a shit ton of debuffs. Her damage is really high, and also, she's good to be paired with the, um, she's interesting because she has this mechanic where if you parry, it goes on to cooldown, I don't know how long, but every few seconds you can do this, like, parry where you'll parry, and instead of taking, like, a block to stun them, you'll like evade backwards and hit them and you can start a combo. It's kind of weird to explain, but she kind of like, it counts as an intercept and it counts as a, um, yeah, it counts as an intercept for some reason. So for like intercept nodes, it's pretty nice. And she doesn't take any damage from this. So if you use like the Nick Fury Quake synergy, she can do this like four times in a row. And it's pretty crazy. So her damage is just too high to ignore. So Elsa Bloodstone, proud to say, has made it in the top five officially. Next in fourth place, we do not have as a um, five or six star. We got our boy Hit Monkey. I'm glad they now have this new um, thing. You can inspect characters, so I can show you the six star, not the three star, just because it looks better. But Hit Monkey, I don't know too much about him. No, I'm not gonna lie. But what I do know for gameplay I've seen is he can shrug off debuffs, so he's good for suicides. He's extremely good defender. And I think his, I think his first, uh, I think his first light attack and both mediums are guaranteed crits. So he's kind of like Corvus in a sense when you three combo, and his damage is just really high. Um, so Hip Monkey's a number four. There's not much to say about him. He puts bleeds and shit. He does a lot of damage. He's basically a number four just because he does crazy damage, and he can shrug off debuffs. Um, what else can you do? Guaranteed crits is there definitely very helpful. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I don't fucking know what this is, but, well, when he has assassins cutting on, he prevents evade, he has a whole bunch of decent utility, but the main reason he's number four, honestly, is just because he has crazy damage, I cannot say I know too much about him, um, so yeah, I can't say too much about him, but he, his three combos just crit really hard like Corvus, and they're guaranteed crits, and they have strong bleeds on them. So just from the damage alone and the fact that you can shrug off debuffs, these are just number four. So have fun with that ranking. And number three, we got my boy Stealth Suit Spider-Man. 
Um, this dude is really good prestige, really good damage, but really good utility. Pretty easy to use, honestly. He seems kind of hard to use, but he's really not that hard to use once you get used to him. Um, hold on, I gotta take a sip of water one second. <sighs> Thank you. Um, so, one thing I like about this guy, and I'm pretty sure it's the same thing for Elsa. I don't know about Hitmonkey, but I know Elsa and Cell Suit, they don't really need their awakened ability. They don't really do too much. Like, this guy just makes his Furies a little bit more potent, so it's like, no, whatever, it's not a big deal, but... This guy, with his slow mechanic, is just so good. Like, the fact that you can have an infinite slow on the opponent is so good for fights like Thing in the Abyss, Luke Cage in the Abyss. There's just some big fights that he can one-shot. He can one-shot a lot of fights in the Abyss. It'll just take a long time. But this dude's damage is really high, too. Like, if you've ever seen, like, rank 3, 6-star gameplay, in a slow mode, when he uses the slow web cartridges, he still hits, like, about as hard as the 5-star maxed out with his damage mode active. So, with the 6-star rank 3 damage when active, he crits like crazy. Um, if you end the combo with the light attack, you put your slow on them, or you put your damage buff, whatever whatever one you choose. I think there's a third one, the Enervate, yeah. But this one's kind of shit, so no one really uses it. But people either use the damage one or the slow. The damage is just for good damage, and the slow is for utility, obviously. He, he can get a passive Fury and passive Precision that lasts pretty much the whole fight. It's pretty easy to keep him up. Um, every time you dex, I think they pause for like three seconds, so you can keep them up pretty easily. For most fights, it's the whole fight, and except for like abyss fights, sometimes you might have to refresh it. But when you get the precision and fury, you're basically critting every hit, and your crits are doing massive damage, like 8,000, 10,000, shit like that. So his damage is just insane. The fact that he has that permanent slow, not a lot of characters have, makes him up there in top three. Um, he's just an overall really cool character. Also, his prestige is very good. So, yeah. Now, for the second and first spot, for the longest time, I've put Aegon in first place. But, I think this is going to be the first time I do not. Because, this gameplay, once you do Abyss and Labyrinth, he still is good for Act 6 and 7. I used him, but not better than Fury. So... For once, Aegon is going to be in second place. Um, I have him as a rank 3, 6 star, 674. He has pretty decent prestige. Not like the best, but not like the worst either. It's pretty like high up there. Um, and this guy is basically the, arguably the best character in the game when he's ramped up at 1,000 hits. The problem is there's very few scenarios where you can get him to 1,000 hits. But if we're talking max potential, this dude is insane. He basically... Um, crits every hit, will shrug off any debuff in the game on a crit, um, crits through block does massive damage, cancels all evade and auto block, um, ignores all physical resistance, has furies, and has a shit ton of buffs so you can counter buffed up nodes, um, has, uh, makes the opponents minus 100% reduced ability accuracy for his next hit, and since you're critting every hit, it's basically it. You have, you're always unstoppable and combo shielded up, and you're always in a thousand hits. You're always unblockable, so he's fully unblockable. He basically can do almost everything in the entire game at a thousand hits. At a thousand hits, he's probably the best character in the game. Um, probably, yeah. I mean, he's probably is the best character at a thousand hits. Um, he, the only person that would really rival him is Quake, but even then, I still think he's better than Quake when he's at a thousand hits. The biggest problem with Aegon is it's hard to ramp him up to a thousand hits for most pieces of content. But even for like lower content, Act 6, 7, he still is usable. In Act 7, there's a few paths I used him for because he was really good for. Um, like certain paths in Act 7, they made it kind of like the monthly event, the Cavalier monthly event, where it helps certain classes and with, with certain ways. So there's a skill path in Act 7, and I forgot how it works. But I just remember Aegon destroying this path easily. I mean, at 100 hits every crit, and you crit pretty much every time at 100 hits, every one of your hits, uh, you'll shrug off any debuff. So pretty easily in a quest, you can get fully debuff immune. So he's still a really good character. Still second overall in the game. Him and, and Nick, I think, are interchangeable for first and second. You could put him over Nick, and I'd understand. But yeah, for me, I'm putting him in number two. And then number one... The character that I'm saving, a lot of shards for my dual class, dual class crystals, Nick Fury. This guy is just a powerhouse. 
Um, you know, it's kind of funny because Aegon's like a literal demigod, but Nick Fury's just a normal human with a pistol. But in this game, at least, he's just the best skill character. His bleeds uh, as like max out five stars, six star rank three. It's just unbelievably strong. Like some of the strongest in the game. Um, the do you bleed path just get bullied by him. Um, his damage is so high. His damage output is just so high, and you can go fully unblockable so easily. And you can also shrug off debuffs um, by knocking them on the ground so easily to the point where he's like not really debuff immune, but he can get rid of debuffs if he needs to. And he's always fully unblockable, and his bleeds are just so strong. Like, if they're not bleeding immune, they will die so quickly. And another thing that makes this guy crazy is his awakened ability. He only needs to be Sig 1 to be pretty good. I forgot to mention Aegon kind of needs high Sig. If he's not awakened, he's pretty shit, but you probably knew that already. But Nick Fury, he doesn't need his awakened ability. Without his awakened ability, he's like god tier. Pretty high up there, pretty good. But with his awakened ability, he just goes straight up to beyond god tier, best in class. Um, when he dies, instead of dying, he enters his second life, his life model decoy. He can only do this once in a quest. But when you get into his real phase, he degenerates down to 30% health and shrugs off every debuff or every passive on him. So he's extremely good for that. Um, shrugging shit off. But in his second life, he degenerates down to 30% health. You got 30% health. But the reason for this is because it, it's like a payoff, like a, the, the, the payoff is great for being only at 30% health. His damage just goes up like exponentially. His bleeds and normal hits will hit like two, three times as hard. In his second phase, he, um, it's just so OP. Also, he has, um, these charges, tactical charges. You get, um, one when you get hit. And if you have a fury on you, you get two when you're hit. But when you're playing the character, that's not too well. So, when he does a um, special one, he gets four tactical charges. And if he's in his second life, he gets eight. He gets double. Um, starts the fight with six tactical charges to find an Avenger. And basically, uh, at five tactical charges, um, also when you're in the second life, the tactical charges are permanent. In the first life, they kind of decay over time. So, in a second phase, he's better. But in a second phase, at five plus charges, which is just one special one, um, you can't be miss or evaded, so you can't miss or be evaded, so it just cancels all that. Very fun. Um, at 10 charges and 15 charges, which is when you throw the spe second special. When you throw the second special one, you're at 16 charges permanently. Um, Nyx purify effects now target all debuffs, so if you knock them on the ground, um, you can purify any debuff. Um, and then at 15 plus charges, which you'll be at from the second special, you're fully unblockable. So he's a fully unblockable, can't be evaded, can't be auto-blocked, pretty much fully debuff immune, just god bleeder who ends fights faster than 99.9% .9 of the characters in the game. Um, he like rivals characters like Archangel when it comes to speed. Um, so he, his damage output's crazy if you can bleed them. And that's not the only thing that makes this guy insane. The other thing that makes him insane is his synergies. So he has one with himself, so with everyone else on your team, you get 10%. All heroes gain 10% attack rating, and if he's, if Nick's alive, then it's a 20%. So, just for having Nick on the team and he's alive, all your heroes on the team gain 20% attack, which is very nice. Also, a very fun synergy that people love. Pretty much all of his synergies are really good, except for, like, these. Actually, just basically these. Um, these top three are really good. Restoration kit, it's kind of hard to get, but you need a... You can do it with a white Deadpool, a normal Deadpool, a gold pull. Most people using this energy are going to be using Deadpool X-Force, the white one. Um, but if Nick's alive once per fight, um, it'll instantly nullify or take away a lead, poison, or shock debuff when the fight starts. Um, regenerating 10% of your max health for 3 seconds. So if you're running suicides, this will instantly take away the bleed and regen 10% of your health. But if you're using a character like Hyperion, who's immune to bleed... I mean, you mean to poison, um, it'll take away the bleed, and then your suicide master uses the poison and the bleed are both gone. So it's very helpful if you're using suicides. Um, just keep yourself topped up in the fight. Very fun indeed. It's very nice. And if you're not using suicides, then say you mess up and you get hit by, like, Black Panther's special one, and he puts a bleed on you, um, it'll, he'll shrug off the first bleed once per fight and regenerate 10% health. So it's really just good for suicide users, honestly. 
um, very fun for people to use suicides, and most people in the end game do use suicides. And then this is also such a good synergy with Quake or Ant Man. Most people pair it with Quake because she's a good questing character and Ant Man's not. But Ant Man might be on the team if you're using Ghost, so it's not bad, honestly. And if Nick is alive, um, you have three evade charges on yourself. Um, so you start the fight with three evade charges and they're permanent. And say you miss a parry and he's about to smack you in the face, you will use one of these charges and evade, and then you'll be at two charges. So you can, it, it's a very good fail save to play aggressive or go for intercepts because if you make a mistake, it'll just evade. So he's just an overall questing god. His synergies make your team a lot stronger. Um, synergies with, you know, Quake, I mean, really good synergy. And if you're end game content, you might have Nick Fury and Quake on the same team just because they're both so good. And his damage is just crazy. So he's definitely the number one skill character. Um, some more shout outs, if I had to say. More honorable mentions. Night Thrasher was decent. Um, Netflix Daredevil is getting a complete overhaul in December. And Magneto went from being one of the worst characters in the game to one of the best. So if they do the same for this guy, he might be in the top five soon. Um, Black Widow Deadly Origin, her damage is pretty good. She's kind of like a shock version of Gwenpool. But I still, I still value Gwenpool higher because the ability accuracy. So Gwenpool's up there. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Night Thrasher is also pretty decent. But... I will say this, um, I don't know with how much confidence, but skill is either the fifth or sixth worst class, um, um, or fifth or sixth best, I guess you could say. Like, it's definitely at the bottom with tech, if I just, tech or mystic, I don't know. It's not one of the best classes. Without Aegon and Nick Fury, this class is kind of shit. So yeah, hopefully you guys knew this top five list. If you disagree with me, agree. Tell me what you think, and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.